Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Bulletproof Dental Practice Podcast. Today, I'm flying solo uh, without my co-host, Pete, uh, because I got a very personal friend on the podcast today, someone that oftentimes will not um, do something like this because it's not really, uh, according to her, in her wheelhouse, um, but she has so much to give and so much uh, that we can all learn from. And she's been an inspirational, positive force of my life. I'm very lucky to call her my personal friend. I met her through um, a series of very interesting events, but I I have the pleasure of caring for her in my dental practice and in turn and in kind, she has dove deep into my personal life and helped me immeasurably in so many different situations. And she's imparted so much wisdom uh, to me. And um, I feel blessed in the fact that uh, she's paid it so deeply forward with me that I wanted to um, in turn give you a taste of um, her greatness and her um, her advice. Uh, So it is my distinct pleasure to welcome somebody very special, um, Sage Robbins, to this podcast. So um, Sage, you may know because she has a very famous husband, Tony Robbins, but um, although Tony is a six foot seven force of uh, power, I always think that the biggest and most powerful aspect of that relationship is this uh, demure but extremely powerful uh, wife he's got, Sage Robin. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started. I hope you enjoy this. And if you do, please like or share this podcast. This is gold for the right person who needs this at this moment. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy all of it. Take care, guys. First of all, it is so amazing to have you here. Um, mm-hmm. When I see you, it's, uh, it's such a sense of peace comes over to me because uh, obviously you've been in my life for some time and every time we see each other professionally, invariably you wind up going and checking on how I am and there's no, there's no BS uh, factor with you. You can read me. So mm-hmm. if I say I'm doing okay, you're like, are you, are you really okay? I'm like, well, no, actually, no, I'm going through a hard time and um, just appreciate your friendship and your wisdom. Um, you've been a very impactful person for me per, uh, personally. And uh, I appreciate you coming on this podcast because the things that we shared um, have not only helped me, but I've paid it forward and tried to help other people with that wisdom. So mm-hmm. just really appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you too. And thank you for the invitation and the feelings mutual. I've shared our, I've loved our, this session. Sometimes I'm coming in to get my tooth cleaned or some type of dental work. <laughs> But somehow, uh, life always takes us deeper than that. And uh, it's just as meaningful for me as it is for you, my dear. Uh, Thank you so much. So I want to jump right in and share just something personal. And for those of you who have listened to the podcast for some time, you know that uh, a couple of years ago, I was alluding to going through a hard time. Um, uh, And I, I, I hesitate to use that language now because of what I've learned from Sage as well, because I, I was going through something, I was suffering. Well, it was it was something really in hindsight and through our talks that I realized it was inappropriate suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an employee issue and it went it, it kind of went bad and um, the employee was saying things about me and I made it really big and it was affecting me. It was a, it was affecting me on a personal level. And you said something so interesting to me. You said, um, you know, who you said first of all, you you, you told me I'm overindulging in the suffering mm-hmm. that you know God has a way or the universe has a way of if you don't learn something, you'll get the volume turned up on you and you'll have to learn that lesson over and over and over. You can say, aha, this is for my learning, for my higher growth. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that um, through this process and talking with you, I realized I had overindulged in my suffering. I made the suffering bigger um, than it needed to be because really it was an encapsulated incident. I'm fine. No one was hurt. It's over but I went really deep and, and created an identity out of the suffering. And you said something so beautiful to me. You said, who do I need to apologize to? Mm. Who, who have you? You said to me, the, there's conscious and unconscious leadership. So unconsciously, who have you brought into your struggle along with you? Mm. And immediately, viscerally, I was like, my family. Mm. Well, go home and apologize to them. Who in your family? My wife and my children. And I went home that night and I sat down and I said, daddy's been going through some stuff and I inappropriately indulged. I went so far in the suffering. I made the suffering about me and I'm sorry about what I did for daddy not showing up and being distracted with that. And at that moment, Sage, my children and my wife all started crying and it was a beautiful cathartic moment. And it was such a valuable lesson for me and one that I've actually learned since. So thank you for that. But I was able to 
um, from that conversation realize that it's when we are taking suffering on for ourselves, we're not showing up for the people that we love. And we're showing them a clear example of, of you know, a way to live. And it's just not the example I want to show for my family. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I remember that moment. And you mentioned just one thing I'd love to just touch upon. As you said, inappropriate suffering. Uh, the truth is, is we all suffer. You know, we all suffer, whether it's inappropriate or too much or too little. Uh, you know, when I mentioned about the volume being turned up, it's we have an external circumstance, usually of a trigger of pain for you. It was that, you know, that circumstance with your employee. And, you know, we put meaning upon meaning. This shouldn't have happened. You know, this is unfair. This is unjust. And that narrative, that that narrative becomes like a almost like a crazy aid in our mind. And it just happens over and over and over again. And one meaning stacks, up, stacks upon another meaning. And then, you know, we'll have an interaction with somebody we love and we're not fully present or connected. And so, boom, another, you know what I mean? An, another experience and another meaning stacks. And I think, you know, what's beautiful as you would call inappropriate. I don't know if it's inappropriate because it was. Yeah, good I, point. You know, it, it, it was, and it caused, you know, your own internal suffering, the pain with inside yourself uh, that was caused by your believing and thinking was turned up what you call inappropriate, but it also created an opening. You know, I think, I think that's the, you know, we're living in such a unique time right now in externally in the world, the volume is turned up. If you turn on the news, if you go on social media, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, dividedness, divisiveness. And uh, inside of our own minds as human beings, it's like, this is, this is scary. This is overwhelming. I'm terrified for my life, for my family's life, my mommy, if she gets COVID or you know what I mean? Uh, you know, the injustice or whatever the labels that we put on things, they may just be a label, but with that carries meaning and carries emotion. And we carry that around unconsciously inside of ourselves. And uh, for myself, you know, uh, at a time in my life when the volume turned up so high is when I actually turned within, you know, I was looking for something outside myself, something that had to change and it wasn't changing. Uh, and that caused me to look at myself. Um, and through that process, you know, there's amazing tools, uh, you know, for my own, cause that's all I can share is my own experience is I use meditation and prayer. Uh, we do a priming type exercise that we do um, that, you know, I'll share, we'll, we'll send the link that you can send it out to your, your people. Um, and it's like, you know, we thoughts just, just come and it's like our, our mind, there's a tuning to our mind or to our consciousness through the actions of prayer and meditation. It tunes us, it opens us, it, it centers us, it grounds us and gives us a broader perspective than just simply the thoughts that keep regurgitating inside of our mind. Uh, and it's so hard to quiet that mind. Like you, you talk about that crazy eight and just, I think I just want to explain that to our listeners. It's like, it's just, you keep going through this certain pattern of like feeling guilty and then suffering and then anger and suffering and, and the mind just doesn't stop. I was reading this really cool book. Are you familiar with Naval Ravikant by any chance? No. I was talking to Josh about it. So Josh, mm-hmm. I sent this book to Josh um, and uh, Naval Ravikant just wrote this book called The Almanac. And he's just brilliant. You will love this man. He's amazing. Um, and he talks about that you can't actually chase happiness. Mm-hmm. Happiness is, is positive thoughts and just positive. And it's just total bullshit. Like you can't be positive all the time. Mm-hmm. And it implies a duality. If there's positive, there's negative. So he says people just need peace. And mm-hmm. if you have peace and if your mind is still, happiness can enter into that space. And I didn't mean to go off on a tangent, but I, I, while you were talking, it just made me think of something. Maybe it's not inappropriate suffering. It was an overindulgence in suffering. You called me out and you got up in my face. I'll never forget the day. Remember, you're like, Spodak, are you listening to me? And like, I'm, for those of you who don't know, I'm 6'5", and she's up in my face. And I'm like, I am freaking scared. I was scared of you at that moment because you really wanted to get into my face and just make, you're not listening. You've got to get it. You've got to get it. And I so appreciate that you did that with me because at that point, the overindulgence and suffering, my identity was suffering. Yes, I and to your point, then you're, if, you're, if you're suffering and that's your identity, guess what you're going to get? Yeah. More suffering. Well, more suffering or crumbs of sympathy, you know, sympathy for ourselves, sympathy from others. We'll go and we'll perpetuate that and we'll share our story. And it's like, oh gosh, Craig, I'm so sorry to hear that. And then somebody else is like, oh man, I'm so sorry. But that's not really that fulfilling. That sucks, by the way. It sucks. That's then, why when I was, yep. yeah, sorry. 
you no, know, it, it's 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 not uh, a liberating feeling. You know, I think we all yearn to be able to connect in a meaningful way with the people that we love and remove uh, the thoughts or the beliefs that are interfering with that reality. Yeah, I, I, it's, um, and that's why I even hesitated when I was looking back on it, it was maybe two years ago now, I was saying, you know, just a moment ago, I, I went through a really rough time, like, it really wasn't a rough time. Mm-hmm. No one got sick, thank God. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. I'm better for it. I'm so much better for it. I learned so many lessons from that time. And, you know, I, I, I want to I talk about a quick story that I don't think I've ever told the listeners before. And I'll keep the man's privacy because he's a listener, an avid listener of the podcast. But my partner and I had a, um, a summit, 200 people, uh, right before the COVID crisis hit last week of February. And I'm in Dallas. And at the end of the summit, there's a bunch of people waiting around to talk to us.